Wilson Trailers makes farm life easier. Grain trailers are great for unloading dry beans, corn, wheat, or other grains. But what about wet or larger commodities? Like hauling wet mash for hog feed? Or how about hauling potatoes? These crops are not going to fall out of the traps of a standard hopper trailer easily. So what's a farmer to do? Simple! <laughs> Sell the grain trailer and buy a Wilson Patriot self-unloading belt trailer. Easy! Wilson Trailer Manufacturing comes through again to make hauling crops for the farmer easier with the Patriot belt trailer. This trailer is actually a more year-around trailer than a standard hopper trailer. After all, what else are you going to haul with your grain trailer once your crop is harvested and shipped out to the elevator? However, with a belt trailer, you can switch from potatoes to gravel. Cool, huh? The design of the belt unloading system makes it that versatile. Sweet corn on the cob, no problem. Potatoes, no problem. Hay cubes, no problem. <laughs> Gravel, no problem. Unload them all in just a few minutes. The Wilson Patriot Belt Trailer is gonna come in handy on your farm. With the standard 45 degree corrugated aluminum sheets attached to the smooth, flat belly pan, you will be able to unload those potatoes with ease. If hauling more sticky loads, like hops or mash, 57 degree slopes are optional to make sure the load doesn't stick to the sides. Standard conveyor systems depend on the width of the trailer. 36 inch is standard on the 96 inch width trailers, while 42 inch is standard on the 102 inch wide trailers. Other widths are optional depending on the sidewall slopes. Conveyor systems are hydraulically powered and have front PTO hoses with quick couplers for trucks equipped with wet tanks. If your truck doesn't have a wet tank and you don't want to retrofit one on, no problem. Wilson offers a 20 horsepower Honda electric start gasoline powered hydraulic system with load scent hydraulic pump enclosed in an aluminum box to power the conveyor system. The most important part of the conveyor system is the chain and flaps. Wilson uses a multiply rubber flaps that are attached to enclosed aluminum cross member tubes and two lengths of chain. Flaps hang down under the trailer to help them self-clean before completing the revolution back into the trailer. On the inside of the trailer, the flaps lie flat under the load, but they develop large pockets to positively grip the product. This helps eliminate bridging of the product as it moves out of the rear of the trailer, making for a clean unload. With multiple options designed to make the Patriot Belt Trailer even more versatile, one that stands out is the Grain Funnel. This option attaches quickly to the rear of the trailer to provide directed flow of the product, like corn or beans, into a trap. Then it conveniently stores underneath the trailer. How useful is that? With the Grain Funnel option, there is no real reason to own a one season only grain trailer. Get one of these belt trailers to haul your grain and another income source hauling other commodities with ease the rest of the year. The Wilson Patriot self unloading belt trailer does it all. Let's head on down now to the rock quarry and talk about one of the DCP release of the Patriot belt trailer. And here we go guys, isn't this cool? It is a Diecast Promotions Kenworth T680 day cab in red with a black Wilson 50 foot Patriot belt trailer. Now this did not come as a set this way. 
I don't even remember what came with that belt trailer, but the tractor, it actually came with either a propane or an anhydrous tanker. Either way, it was the Mississippi uh, pressure tanker. This is a long trailer for what would be a grain trailer, but you can see how the belt hangs down. Now, at first when I saw these trailers, I thought that looked goofy, but guess what? That's the way they really look. They do hang down just like that. It has a tandem axle up front and then a spread configuration for the rear axle. Now we'll go underneath and you can see the axles are super singles on the first two, the tandem part, and then the rear axle is just standard singles. You've got chrome wheels with soft rubber tires and nice tread patterns on them. There's a big solid mud flap that goes the whole length of the truck, which is partly to keep stuff from falling underneath the truck. It's a great idea when you're unloading and then regular mud flaps behind the other tandems. Then you can also see the air ride suspension. Kingpin up front will hook up to any DCP, first gear, or uh, Advantage die cast, Neo scale models, trucks, really sharp. And then you can see how the belts actually start to fold up. They molded that belt really cool when they put it on here. It has screw down type landing gear, which is great for DCP. And then the sides are painted in black. Now they are this trailer is actually quite heavy. Come around towards the front. You can also see on top it has a black tarp and it is a black cloth tarp. Has the Wilson tampo on the side, DOT striping down the side, the black sides. Then it has the chrome corners and chrome front. Looks really sharp. There's a little catwalk there and the ladder. It also has its little warnings. You can see them all there, tampoed warnings here, 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 all over the place. Then your hookups for your hydraulic lines, for your wet tank on the tractor, if you're so equipped, and it also has the air and electric line hookups. Wilson logo is tampoed there, and then it's got three little marker lights in the center, and then marker lights on the corners. Over on the passenger side, it's got these hooks here so that you could roll the tarp up and put it in and you really can roll these tarps up it does work it's not the easiest thing to do but it does work that's the beauty of the cloth tarps they look more realistic Wilson logo tampoed here black sides DOT striping now what makes this different from the others is on the back of these trailers it has the hydraulically opening door which actually opens and there's a hydraulic piston there it opens, then the belt would come out. Now the belt floor doesn't actually roll. There's electric motor, or the hydraulic motor that rolls it. It has these little splash guards here. There's a ladder to climb up. And then it has other parts detailed. There's the Wilson logo, three red clearance lights in the center and one on each corner. The little reflector corners, DOT striping, Wilson trailer mud flap on there, Wilson trailer there, and then Wilson trailer Big wide one in the center, DOT striping, Wilson trailer logo, and some warnings. Also, there's your three brake lights. They're put in a position where they're actually pretty well protected from the load coming out. This is all a nice splash guard to help the load land on the ground. They did a great job with this trailer. Now we'll go up inside. Because the tarp opens, there you can see all those roof bows that hold it up, and then you can see the uh, slanted side so that the load falls down onto the belt and then the belt and you can also see how the belt just lays flat it creates the little cups down there but it does lay flat and it pulls the load right out the back and these will empty pretty quickly it's kind of amazing if you watch one of these empty they're very very versatile grain trailers and they can haul pretty much anything you get the right grain application, you don't need a grain trailer. You just need one of these and you can do all kinds of stuff. The trailer, it has little pins so you can pull this tarp down and close it up. But one thing though about the cloth tarps that is not my biggest is they do collect dust and they get much, much harder to clean than the plastic ones. Plastic ones, you can clean, wipe the dust off, but these actually require some work to keep them clean. As you can tell, they do collect a little bit of dust. Now we'll talk briefly about the truck. Not a whole lot, because this truck really didn't come with it, but it is still a nice truck, and I don't think I've ever talked about a day cab T680 before. So here we go. It rides on chrome wheels with soft rubber tires. It has great little tampos. It's all red cab. 
Kenworth logo up by the air intake right up there is tampoed really, really nicely. Red cap mirrors on black stands, silver outline doors, and it has a chrome grab bar right there on the side for the driver to climb up in. Chrome diamond plate steps mounted into the fairings right there. Chrome fuel tank with steps on it so you can get up onto the deck plate. Chrome deck plate, which by the way is covered with dust, as you can see. Then it has the all red roof. It has a sunroof on this truck instead of just the solid roof. Really nice. Single exhaust on the passenger side only, and it's a straight, straight up exhaust. Pretty nice. It has the little brake lights back here behind the airlines that are on a pogo stick. You can see the bracing for the exhaust stack. DOT striping, brake lights, and backup lights underneath. Black mud flaps with chrome weights at the bottom. Well, they're just chrome pieces, and then they painted the mud flap and the DOT striping. That works really, really well. Underneath, you can see it has the duals on it. Nice tread pattern on the tires, rear differentials, air brake canisters, rear sus working suspension. You can see right there is the def tank as well as the fuel tank. There's the exhaust, muffler, and all that crap that really goes crazy. Battery boxes and their chrome. Positionable front steering, not true steering. Front spring suspension, really sharp. Opening hood to show off a not superly great detailed engine. They have done much better on engines than this one, but it's a decent engine under the hood. Interior, gray high back seats, steering wheel in black, gear shift on the floor, and nice dashboard with, it looks really sharp inside. On the front, chrome grille, Kenworth logo tampoed right there, individual jewel style headlights with some little orange paint for marker lights. You can see them red cap mirrors on black bar, really nice. It has on the roof the dual chrome air horns and it has tampoed in roof clearance lights. Hard plastic windows front and rear and a hard plastic window on this lower one by the, for the passenger door. Door handles and rings tampoed, chrome grab bar, there's the exhaust and a little chrome mirror so that you could see it down. Actually it's not chrome, it's just painted in silver. And that my friends is the Diecast Promotions Kenworth T680 day cab in red pulling a black Wilson 50 foot Patriot belt trailer with tri-axle configuration. Really, really sharp set and something that you can look for is either the truck or the trailer and add them to your collection. It would be a great addition. This belt trailer is so much more versatile than a grain trailer. You got to get one for your collection. So go on the hunt and find one today. Wouldn't that trailer be more useful on your carpet farm than a standard grain trailer? Thanks, DCP, for bringing out this live bottom belt trailer for us. The trick today is to find one. Since the tooling hasn't been run that many times since it was first released several years ago. You'd think being so versatile, they would be far easier to find and lots of them run. But that's not the case. When it comes to grain, the 45 foot tandem axle pace setter is the most common and easiest to find and the rest are just hit and miss. Oh well. It gives us something to really hunt for and that to me is most of the fun these days. By the way, I've got videos on the Wilson Commander and pace setter grain trailers that you can watch after this video with the links down below. Thanks for watching everyone. Please go on and smash that like button, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.